Ladies and gentlemen, you probably know this, it's an election year. The last time we had an election year, we had a midweek session where we asked America's first political couple of James Carville and Mary Matlin to join us. And it was so well received, we not only have brought them back this year, but we've moved them to the opening general session. We're going to begin with Mary, who a lot of you know was the deputy director of George Herbert Walker Bush's 1992 re-election campaign. More recently, she has served as the top advisor to Vice President Dick Cheney. Please join me in welcoming Mary Madeline. All right, we're not here to proselytize. We're not going to change anybody's mind. We haven't changed anybody. We haven't changed each other's mind on any issue in 15 years. And this cycle, everybody pretty much knows who they are. You're, there's any decided people and undecided people in this room. Can I have your card on the way out? <laughs> Everyone's going to matter. Um, this campaign, this cycle, even for people like us who have done it for 30 years, resembles nothing we've ever seen. We have no templates. We have no models. We might as well be the Wright brothers, except that we're not geniuses and we're not resourceful. But it's completely uh, uncharted territory, and neither are, none of the pundits are particularly um, genius. Every piece of conventional wisdom has been wrong, right? John can't win. Hillary can't lose. So here we are in the final ferocious days. There's one month left, a little under that, and the velocity, if it's possible, is increasing and the ferocity will be increasing in, these final, in this final stretch. Now, but the biggest mitigating factor for John McCain, and you just can't pull this, but this is, it is true, is that in a change election, uh, McCain can lay good claim to being a change candidate. In fact, a better claim than Barack Obama. Again, I'm not trying to proselytize, but if he can get this message out through the next debates and these final, uh, this last month, he is a maverick. He is, a, he is an independent. He does reach across the aisle. He does have that record. I know it. I was in the White House when I had to work the Hill. We had to go to the Republican caucus, the Democratic caucus, and the McCain caucus. He had his own, he always has done his own thing. And when he says country first, he means it. And he's got a record to prove it. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single-engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its detailed design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at CirrusDesign.com. People know instinctively that we're not going to know what problems are going to confront this next president, as we didn't know in the last presidency. So that's what they're going to be looking at. And we don't know what that's going to be, that there, but that there is going to be something. I think we both agree on that, though. So. Can I introduce my husband? Do you want to? He is a genius. He's won all kinds of races, you know, writes lots of books. Um, what else? Um, he was a Marine. He was a corporal. That made him the highest ranking military official in the Clinton administration. <laughs> and uh, it's a good thing he does know how to run and win races because this is a man whose academic background included 11 years undergraduate study at LSU. <laughs> Though he did obtain a 4.0 on graduation day, which I'm telling my daughters until they're, too, they're old enough to find out for themselves, that was his blood alcohol level. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's, 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 sometimes it's hard to be married to someone that smart because you never get the last word. And I, I wouldn't know what the last word felt like. People always ask me about how I could be married to my wife who thinks so differently than I do. And the truth of the matter is, it's much easier to me to be married to someone who thinks differently and passionately than has no passion or doesn't think. And I've always been very, in, you know, my, my children obviously can do what they want in life and, and every indication is, is they'll, whatever it is that I tell them to do, they'll do the opposite. They, I don't. <laughs> we were leaving the house last night and we had to hurry up and get somewhere and I have a little 10 year old daughter and you know, and we got to be on time and I was trying to say, come on, let's go. And they were having this sort of mom daughter separation anxiety and don't forget your homework and do bring this to school and don't forget to do that. And this is this fold. And I said, look, we just got to leave. 
and she just kept looking at me, and so I was just kind of literally pulling her out the door, and she looks at my little girl, and she says, now, honey, remember, mommy wants you to be good, and my little daughter showing some unfortunate early Republican tendencies looks back and says, mommy, I'll be good if you give me a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> to which my wife looks back at it and says, well, why can't you just be good for nothing like your daddy? <laughs> Sunny or cloudy? Rainy or bright? Day or night? The future of flying is now clearly in sight. Garmin SBT. Synthetic vision technology. This is, a, this is a great industry. I like the way that you have real reverence for history and the, the Wright brothers in 1903. And, of course, we all know the story about how that inspired a young, young John McCain to get into aviation. <laughs> And the thing I've always noticed about your industry is, is people that are in it really like it. And I remember when I was like in, in, in Baton Rouge and they'd have these guys, we used to call them hangar rats. They'd just sit out at the airport and, you know what I mean, looking and talking about what plane landed and stuff like that. And that, and that kind of, and they were like young guys, and that kind of enthusiasm never really leaves people in this industry. As odd as it seems, it's the same way in the political business. Those of us that have done it, we really love it. This is a fascinating business. This is a, a compelling year of which we're seeing storylines develop that we have never seen before. There's so much history being made in this cycle that there's nothing close to it that has ever happened in American presidential political history, ever. Let me, let me give you some examples of some things I'm talking about. If you think about this field, the original field contained the following. The first credible woman to run for president, the first credible African American, the first Italian American, the first Hispanic American. We've had people run for president, been married twice before, the first one, the first time we had a candidate, been married three times, the first credible woman. I believe, and somebody will have to correct me if I'm wrong, that McCain is the third pilot to be nominated to office of president of the United States. We will definitely elect the first senator that we, from the Senate for president since any time since 1960, we're either going for the first time in our history elect an African-American president or a president for the first time that is over 70. If this were a normal cycle and we were living in normal times, you'd be much more comfortable in saying, I'd be much more comfortable in predicting, look, there's not much going to happen. The dynamics of the election in place, all of the underlying dynamics favor the Democrats in this cycle, and it's highly unlikely that anything would change because they're just not big enough events to change that. However, given everything that's happened in this cycle, you would be reluctant to make that pronouncement. And the truth of the matter is, not to say this, I mean, it's no sense in, Obama's ahead, McCain is behind. Wow, put that in your dope sheet. <laughs> Trust me when I tell you this, I can't tell you to a certainty who's going to win. I can tell you to a certainty that events are going to continue to change that the landscape is, is if you will, this is a, th th there's a, a, a lot of potential weather between here and the time that we land the suck on November, on November the 4th. There's going to be a lot of air traffic control delays. There's going to be, a, you know, it might be an, an engine failure too along the way. So we're just going to have to see. <laughs> this is not going to be a routine flight, I promise you. But uh, there's, there's, there's a lot to be fascinated about. This is clearly a, a challenging time in our American, in American history. Uh, somebody said the other night, says, well, our economy is entering a new chapter, or that would be chapter 11. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I really do want to thank you guys for, for having us back. It is, it, anytime that you get to speak to a group like this, it, it's an honor, but to be invited back is, is a double honor to sit here and watch uh, the, the sort of reverence that you have for the pioneers in, 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 in your industry and the people that like have done great things is refreshing and we appreciate it. We're glad to take any questions.